Hi everyone and welcome to our next live stream as part of our virtual open event and we are keeping our focus on construction but we're looking at a different area. You may have just watched the trial trade so looking at bricklaying and plastering um, but now we're focusing on carpentry and joinery and painting and decorating. So we're joined by two of the most educated people in the construction department. I'm sure they'll like me to call them that. And uh, we're joined by Nick and Kirk. Hi guys, how are you doing? Hi, you okay? Uh, yes, I yeah. like that introduction. We're going to use that again and again. Yeah. Yes. You can tell everyone I said that, so it's all right. Um, yeah. So do you guys want to sort of introduce yourself? Nick, do you sort of want to tell us who you are and, and what sort of your role is at the college? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, so my name's Nick Allen. I'm a programme lead in Club Tune Joinery. So obviously in, in, in my department, uh, we offer two, two routes. Uh, one is the bench where you manufacture, uh, manufacture um so stairs and windows and doors and then the other the other side of it is where you will go down the route of site work um so basically you'll go and install uh kitchens worktops skirting boards architraves uh, hanging doors um so they're the two two routes in carb tune joinery fantastic and kirk uh so i'm kirk and i'm the program lead for construction skills level one and painting decorating level two and level three. Uh, Construction Skills First is a level one course where learners can taste a little bit of every single uh, tra trade within construction. So we've got the craft areas of carpentry and joinery, painting, decorating, bricklaying and plastering. That's uh, for those learners that don't quite know what they want to do yet. And it's also for those learners that um, would like to do everything for someone that wants to be a property developer, um, for an example. And also we're there to catch up on any English and maths for the learners that fell short of achieving their grades to get on to level two. So bring us on to my area of expertise, level two and three in painting and decorating. And we cover all aspects of painting and decorating from preparation all the way through to, to the, the finer arts of fine, um, gold leafing and decorative effects and very expensive wall covering such as Lincruster, which is uh, 250 years old manner of doing things. Fantastic, thank you. So obviously we've talked, um, you know, we've got who you guys are. We want to talk a little bit about your courses and sort of what things students can expect to sort of learn, how they're sort of set out, that kind of thing. So Nick, do you want to take us through sort of the carpentry and joinery courses? Yeah, of course. Okay, yeah. So uh, the level two site uh, carpentry and joinery course is uh, basically you will be coming in and doing, like I said earlier, you'll be doing a lot of practical. So it's about 70% worth of practical work. So you'll be doing kitchens, worktops, uh, skirting, architecture, hanging doors, doing stud petitions, right up to the joists and fitting uh, truss roofs as well and doing the fascia and soffit. So there's loads and loads of elements within site level two culture and joinery course. Um, so like I said, about 70% of it is practical. Uh, and then the rest is, is basically with the theory to give you that underpinning knowledge uh, so you can put your good skills to good use. Uh, the level three uh, carpentry course is a lot more complex. Uh, so we're going on to hand cut roofs, uh, doing a lot of curve work. So like bay windows, so curved skirtings around your bay windows using the machines an awful lot to produce various uh, wood components as well. Um, it's just about the same. It's probably about 70% practical and, um, you know, the 30% theory as well. Um, but the theory goes in a lot more in depth. So within the theory elements, you need to explain, evaluate, analyze, describe and explain. Um, so there's a big jump from a level two to a level three. Uh, but stacks of practical. Uh, and backed up with, with a bit of theory work as well. Fantastic. And Kirk, can you tell us a bit about the paint, painting and decorating in the crafts course? Yeah, very much like Nick, to be honest. The, the level goes, goes steadily up as it goes through level one, level two, level three. Asking the same questions, but just in a different way. So uh, level one might be a what is this question. A level two would be how would this change if this was to happen a level three would be to evaluate what you would do what choices you make and then also analyze what could come out of that uh, so the areas that we cover are everything within painting and decorating from new houses being being built because the construction industry is linked to uh the gbp the team U uk that's uh government driven creating new houses, new jobs, 
um, to for our for our country. A million new houses in the in the next couple of years needed. Somebody's got to decorate them. So the bare wood, the bare plaster that's in those properties, we've got to learn how to produce that, prepare that, and the final product. And also, I'd like to invite the people that are watching just to where are they now? Look look around their their house, their bedroom, their lounge. If I was to say to you, right, you're going to decorate that now, what would need doing? It would need stripping. It would need preparing, decontaminating, possibly lining before learning how to put paint on in the correct application, or maybe the wall coverings that go on there. So we look at new work, um, brand spanking new houses, to also the redecoration and the re and the renovation market as well to push um, for the people that don't want to create new houses but they're looking to decorate their own house or hopefully go into their own business redecorating and renovating other people's houses like nick said it starts to ramp up through uh through the the levels level two is giving you everything that you need to be a painter and decorator level three is more specialist wall coverings specialist decorative it's easy for me to say specialist decorative effects and architectural features so it's the finer side of it and also spray application as well as brush and roller application. Fantastic. Cool. Well, thanks for that sort of whistle stop tour of the course there. Obviously, there is a lot that you'll cover over the two years, but that's sort of quite a nice summary. Um, so we have a couple of questions um, that we have for you. But if you are watching at home, do you have any questions? Don't hesitate to pop them in the comments and these guys will answer those for you. Um, so coming out of obviously uh, the normally a two year course for a, a level three diploma, isn't it? That's correct. Yeah. Over, over two, over two over years. Two yeah, years level yeah. Two, over two level three yes yeah but would students be able to leave after the level two and be able to you know, go out there and be qualified or would they really need to complete their level three nick okay. do you want to go first i'll go for that too <laughs> wrong side <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so basically if they do a diploma uh, level two within college so they'll have the understanding and the knowledge but the only bit that they're missing would be the on-site experience and that's where the NVQ comes in um, so they'll be missing um, the on-site experience of going out getting witness testimonies having photos taken of them doing particular tasks um, so it puts them in a good stead regarding a CV application for a, a big company say uh, it stands them in, in, in better stead to get that uh, probably that job uh, but then you'll just need to build up on their experience by building probably like a, an MVQ folder. So I'm hoping that's answered the, that question really. I don't know if there's anything you want to add on to that, Kirk. No, so um, yeah, pretty much the same as Nick. And it's fair to say that all all construction areas, so myself, Nick, um, and then the, cons uh, the other areas in craft construction, um, plastering and brick lane, we work hand in glove. We work hand in glove as colleagues um, within the college, but also, um those trades those four trades work hand in glove with all the other trades on a building site on a renovation site it's, it's all happening all the time so it's there's a there's a basic level of understanding for um roof construction within painting and decorating and there will be a, an element of paint and decorating basic paint and decorating within uh plastering and brick because we all work so closely together but the level two will give you that understanding all the way through. And you can get off, if you think of it as a, uh, a train line, and you can get off at any station. Once you've done level one, you can get off. Okay, you could get a job. You could go for your level two, carry along the train line, get off at level two if you can get a job with that, or you can carry on pushing all the way through to level three and to be more qualified, more experienced. And you've got that deeper understanding that employers want. Is is hand in glove the construction way of saying hand in hand? Just out of curiosity. I think it is, but with PPE, we need to wear gloves. Yeah, gloves are very important at the moment, especially. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> in terms of the actual sort of course, um, what is the written to practical work balance like? Is there a lot of theory in construction, or is there a lot of more hands on work? Um, there is a lot of theory. I was going to answer this, Nick, because Nick um, put on to a little bit before. Um, there is a lot of theory work, um, but let's just distinguish between workshop-based and practical work, 
uh, workshop based and theory in a classroom. Uh, there is a there is a difference there. Um, so we're looking at probably um, a fifth of the course or the percentage that are available. We'll come on to maths and English shortly, uh, but about a fifth of the course would be sit down theory based, but a lot of the theory understanding is delivered in a practical way in the workshop. So the, what we're, no, we're not just thinking theory is done in the classroom, theory is also done with a paintbrush in your hand, with wallpaper in your hand, you're constantly thinking, evaluating learners, evaluating your own experience. And there's what we call in teaching a threshold concept is where that light bulb comes on, where they, the learner understands what they've done in theory and how it links to practical and vice versa. So the balance between the two is possibly 50-50 in theory and practical. But people want to know, are they working with their hands? Yes, you're working with your hands a lot more than you are in the classroom, but there is classroom-based activities. Is that the same for you, Nick, as well? Yeah, exactly the same, yeah. Fantastic, we've had a couple of questions from YouTube from Rachel. So Rachel says, do we offer a level one carpentry and joinery course? Okay. Unfortunately, we, we don't, uh, not just stand, a standalone carpentry and joinery course. Um, so we only start at a level two to a level three. However, there is a level one construction skills course that uh, Kurt mentioned earlier um, for them students probably that did, didn't quite meet the grades or are still not made the mind up of which area they want to go in. Um, so I hope you don't mind me carrying on with this, Kurt, but how that works yeah, is you, you've got like a nine week block. Uh, so you'll do nine weeks in carpentry and joinery, nine weeks in painting and decorating, nine weeks in brickwork, and nine weeks in plastering. So it, it gives a right good flavour of the construction, like Kurt mentioned earlier. Uh, but going back to the original question, unfortunately, we don't offer a carpentry and joinery standalone course. Fab, thank you. So another question we've also had is obviously to do with the current situation. Um, are students able to do practical elements of the course even during obviously this uh, interesting time? Uh, yes, we are doing practical work. Uh, we are socially distanced in our in our workshops. Um, so normally in, in the bays that we've got, um, our bays are in paint and decorating, are set up like rooms that you walk into, they look like lounges or bedrooms. Um, and you, we normally have four learners in each in each bay, but that's with social distancing. We've calculated how many learners that we can have safely in there at a time, and we're moving learners round more, so as a more of a carousel within the workshop, rather than all doing one element all the way through. We'll have learners doing one element in one area of the workshop, and another in another, and it's and it can spin round there. So we are doing practical. Um, yes, currently at the moment, theory is being delivered online where possible. Uh, but again, like I alluded to earlier, most of the theory work is done in a practical way in the workshop anyway. So that doesn't really, really affect anything that way. Is that the same for carpentry as well? Yes, 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 exactly the same. Yeah. Fantastic. So that sort of leads on quite a nice um, segue there. And um, what kind of facilities can students sort of expect to use um, when they're on the courses? Okay, so the facilities, uh, well, um, culture and joining is one of the lucky areas, really. Uh, so going back uh, two years ago, we had a £1.9 million uh, refurb. Um, so basically, we've got um, all the mod cons uh, within, within our workshop. A nice big open space, a nice nat natural light coming in, up to date kit, uh, hand kit and power kit, uh, and plenty of a room to to work in. So yeah, I'm, we're we're very lucky uh, in Coventry and Joinery at the minute. Kirk, uh, yeah, we're also extremely lucky because we haven't had one point nine million pounds. <laughs> we get to experience the uh, the walls in their natural state to learn that they're that not all walls are new. Uh, not all woodwork is new. Some of the tools and equipment that we use in painting and decorating are thousands of years old. Um, we know mankind existed because of cave paintings. We've been making paint for 50,000 years and putting it on the walls. Uh, Tutankhamun sarcophagus covered in um, 23 and a half carat gold leaf. The tools that we use and we teach at the level three are the same tools that we used thousands of years ago. 
Um, no, I'm not saying I want, don't want 1.9 million for a brand new workshop. <laughs> um, the, let's look at the reality of it. When you the the people watching this now, when they strip their walls, they're not going to have brand new walls. They're going to have mm -hmm. walls that are are damaged and, and dented, ready to to receive treatment, filling, making good, rubbing down, uh, lining paper, and then the finishing wallpaper. So, although it's it is older, uh, it's exactly fit for purpose. It's it's industry standard what we what we're using. We want people to have the worst of the walls to make the best of the situation. Fantastic, thank you. Um, so we had another question from uh, from YouTube, um, which says, if you don't have any skills, can you go straight on to level two or would you recommend doing the level one? Okay. Um, okay, so uh, if you don't have any skills, you recommend going to level two. Okay, so obviously going on to a level two all depends on what you can bring to the table with your maths and English as well. So there is an entry uh, requirement for a level two programme. Um, but also within the level two programme, we do like a six week in, uh, initial assessment. So let's just say you, you meet the, the criteria for your maths and English and you do enter onto a level two uh, and you're finding it too tricky, too difficult. Uh, there is an opportunity that we can actually move you onto a level one construction skills. And then again, that will give you another year then to enhance and them skills and them hand skills to, to develop and come back for a level two the following year. Um, so if level two and you meet the criteria and you know what you want to do, which area, so that for example, if it is painting and decorating or crafting and joinery, then give it a go and then basically we can we can match match you up to that right programme at that time. Fantastic. Yeah. Should we talk a little bit about entry requirements as well? Um for obviously the courses. Do you sort of what are the entry requirements for the level two and the level three? Do you want to do this, Kirk? Yeah, the so part. they they do differ for different courses. Uh, for for level two painting and decorating, it is a C and a D as a minimum requirement um, for for maths and English. But like Nick alluded to, that's not um, that's not the whole package. It's just the level of understanding, the level of reading, the level of writing that you would need to do to do that. What the equivalent of A levels are. Um, that's the, that's the level that we're pitching it at. Just going slightly back to Lindsay's question. Uh, sorry, it was Rachel, wasn't it? Rachel's yeah. question. She was saying, um, "Does she need any skills?" Um, although Nick, like like she did, uh, like Nick did say, um, you can move down, but it shouldn't be. To, it shouldn't turn you off to actually come in that you've not got any skills. That's what you're here to learn. You're here to learn how to hold the brush, how to hold the saw. So don't let that be a barrier to actually getting to come in. If you've got no skills at all, that's fine. It's you come on in. That's what we're here to deliver to you, to teach you. So back to the, the latest question for me to get on to a level two program, a C and a D, but that will be different across the different construction areas. Fab, is that different for carpentry, Nick, or is it the same? So a carpentry, a carpentry level two is, is grade four. So that's the entry requir requirement. Uh, to get onto a level two college and join course. Yeah, you're looking for two fours in maths and then you're English. Cool, Rich, so another question, which is what campus are these courses run at, which is Freeman's Park campus, um, which is a nice and easy one, that one, um, which is right next to the rugby ground, if you are familiar with Leicester. So it's quite a smack bang in the middle of Leicester. A really nice, it's a really nice campus, actually. It's all very close knit, and you can always uh, pick up a construction student from a mile away. Um, normally they're covered in paint or dust or something, but, you know, it's part of the trade, isn't it? Um, so in terms of obviously uh, studying the courses, do students have to buy tools and equipment in order to be able to study on the courses? Okay. Uh, yes, so they, they for every trade that they do, for um, bricklaying, plastering, carpentry and joinery, paint and decor, and the construction skills level one, there is a bespoke um, tool kit and PPE that is a requirement to do that course. Uh, we need those, so we've got, you've got the hand tools that you can work with, that they're readily available for you and they become second nature to use. And without doing ourselves a disservice as well, we want you to go home with your tools and learn how to hold them, how to do them, do those jobs at home, 
put a door on for your parents, paint the room for, you, uh, for your grandma. You will learn. You will learn by using them all the time. Yes, and so and across the different courses, they they are varying degrees of expense as well, ranging from fifty pounds for the level one to just around a hundred pounds for the level two painting and decorating. And then Nick will say how much the carpentry and joinery one is, but it depends on which course you're doing to how much they are. Yeah. So the, the carpentry and joinery one this year is £125. Uh, and that's like a basic kit, back, uh, mm. kit pack to, to, to do some jobs around the house as well if, if, if it needs to be, if it needs to. And you uh, can get the uh, a bit of help with the funding for that one as well. So if you can't afford it um, and you are eligible for it, you can get funding for that pack as well. So it does sound like a lot of money. There is funding in place for you if you need it. Um, so obviously on a course like, uh, you know, I have quite hands-on course like construction courses, you want to have that in the job real experience so do students have to do work experience as part of their time on the courses okay yes yeah. yes yeah. so, yeah. so, sorry Nick. sorry yeah so a level two uh, program uh, we're looking to do a week's work experience uh, so we're looking about between 35 to 37 hours of work experience uh, so that was all obviously it will be logged um so as you go out without filling out a timesheet and uh, documenting what you're doing uh, each day out on site and level three uh, for work experience is uh, 340 to 350 hours. Uh, so that is basically going out uh, with an employer uh, and doing obviously longer time on site um, and picking up their experience while you're out on site. Again, everything will be logged uh, on like a site diary or a, a timesheet so you can evidence this and, and document it as well. But, you know, and obviously getting the experience while you're out there with, with all different trades. Uh, like Kirk said, we all work together. That's what mm. construction is all about. You can't build a house just on your own. It, you all, all need to work together. And I think that work experience across the board, level two and level three, um, that work experience is, is priceless. Yeah. And will they get help in finding that? Oh, sorry, you carry on. Yeah, there. work experience is part of the study programme for a 16 to 18 year old. So they will, as part of their course, they do their vocational element, any maths and English that they need to, to take. Work experience is part of that study programme along with PSD as well. So it is a requirement for a 16 to 18 year old to undertake that uh, industry-based work experience that gets logged. I think it's, it's fair to say our our job is not just to teach the learners how to paint, how to cut wood, build roofs and stuff like that. Our job in a nutshell is to give you a very real chance of getting on, getting a job in the real world. That's that's our job in a nutshell in further education uh, to give you those skills, to give you that experience that can tell you. And there's not a colleague in the college that, that doesn't understand that that's, that's what they need to they, that's what we are offering. We're not just end offering a qualification. We're offering very real chances at industry placements and a real place in society and, and the working world and get you ready to earn money and hopefully spend money on me. <laughs> um, so will students get help finding that work experience as well then? Yeah, we have a uh, dedicated work, work placement team that will aid you to get that work experience. Mm -hmm. uh, the more proactive learners that they know they want to be a carpenter, they know they want to be a bricklayer, they um, they might find their own. And if they find their own, members of the, staff, uh, the college staff will go and make sure that the, the company's got their correct uh, public liability, public yeah. indemnity, and got their correct uh, qualifications before we send any learners out there to undertake that work experience. Yeah. Now, it's mandatory for a 16 to 18 year old to do that, but if we can find placements for the adults, so the 19 plus learners, we'll do that as well. Because again, our job is to get you where you want to go. Fantastic, cool. Um, so we'll come on to our last sort of set of questions now, but if you have any questions um, that you'd like to ask, pop them in the comments and we'll try and answer this before the end of the stream. Um, so there's a thing called PSD on a lot of our courses, but what is PSD and do students have to participate in it? Yes. It's one for you, Kurt, then. Yeah, yeah. okay. So PS PSD is personal social development. 
and it's the the soft side of the college where interpersonal skills cv building um everything that you need to be that fully rounded member of society uh, employee not just great at what you do you might be great as a painter and decorator but you need to be able to apply for jobs sit interviews and this gives you the psd sessions give you that knowledge understanding and empowerment to take that forward uh, and answer to the the question yes they are part of the study program program and must be completed by all 16 to 18 year old learners fantastic thank you so it's sort of coming to the end now and um, but is there any sort of advice or anything that you'd say to students of going into the construction next year um from what i've seen so early on this year before we've come live is basically get your application in because this year they the spaces have just gone uh, obviously we've only got so many places within our courses across construction so if i can give some advice now to you know for these school leavers that are going to uh, going to come to soon is basically um fill out an application and uh, and submit it to leicester college and uh, uh again and if you're not sure what you want to do at this stage then obviously keep looking on the website watching all these videos uh and again if you're not sure then you can still apply for construction skills where it gives you that uh, insight of the all four trades within construction that we offer yeah. I, say, I, I, don't, I don't know of one trade this year that has got spaces left on the course we have we have booked up that quickly within about three or four days the applications were processed and our courses were full um we We've always, construction has always been part of the, the country's build um, that gets people into jobs. And we, we feel that pressure as people build houses and the economic growth of the country. So in construction, it's very, very fast paced. We need to get applications in there. If industry wants to build houses, then we need to, those people to come through the door. And that's always been that way. Most of the country's growth comes from the square mile of London for, and, and construction. They are both linked together with the growth of this country. Painting and decorating is the most in-demand trade in Leicestershire. Uh, at the moment, maybe it's people renovating their houses or wanting to, to sell their houses to do, but we need painters and decorators to come through. The thing is, it's quite old fashioned advice where we we're offering a trade. Once you have got this qualification, not just in painting decor, but across across crafts, you've got it for life. The skills that we teach you don't become old. You know, I'm, we're teaching you painting decorating skills that are hundreds of years old. You could use those skills to paint your bedroom. You could get, use those skills to to start your own business. If you put those skills away for ten years and come back to them, they will still be there. So whatever you want to do, you're always going to have those skills. So it's, there's never a better time to get in, con, into construction. Uh, and the, the road and the path blues, yes, we've talked about level one, level two, and level three, but it doesn't stop there. You can do HNCs, level three, uh, three four, um, going on to doing masters in construction in, with our partnership universities across Leicester. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you guys so much for, for joining me for this one. Um, if you have been watching and you have any other questions, you can message us on our social media pages or email us info at leicestercollege.ace.uk. And as I was saying, if you do want to apply, it's best to apply early because these courses do very much fill up. So you can apply now on our website. Just find the course that you want to um, take and click apply now. Um, but for now, we'll say thank you guys so much for joining me and thank you guys at home for watching. Um, we'll be back in a little bit with some information about you and PS16 so applying for our post 16 courses um, so we'll see you very soon and thanks for thanks for joining us bye guys